Canada is home to 7% of the world's freshwater water supply, making us one of the most water-rich countries here on Earth. But don't get too comfortable. Scientists are warning water shortages could soon be headed our way in communities right across the country. Joining me from Saskatoon this morning is the Canada Research Chair in Water Resources and Climate Change, John Pomeroy. Good to have you with us. Good morning. Thank you for having me on. We have millions of lakes in this country. With such a large supply of fresh water, what are some of the factors that leave us here vulnerable for droughts or shortages? Well, we have lots of water in Canada. There's no doubt about that. But most of that water is in the north, and it's flowing towards the north. So it's the flows of water that are important. But also remember, we have vast semi-arid areas in western Canada, in the southern prairies, and in the interior valleys of British Columbia, like the Okanagan. And because of changing climate, we're getting greater climatic variability. So we're seeing droughts in places where they were in common before, like southern Ontario, across British Columbia, the boreal forest. Uh, you know, they're manifested in things like forest fires or water quality alerts because we have uh, tremendous algae growth in our lakes to make them undrinkable. Um, but sometimes we have rivers that run dry, like the Milk River in southern Alberta a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are very real things, and our big cities have had water, drinking water restrictions already. Uh, you talked about, I know that area well, the Palliser Triangle. I'm from southern Alberta and from farming people from down there, and I understand fully the droughts that are they're experiencing and, and the solutions they've had to come up with. In the east, weather conditions are actually expected to get even wetter. So what does that mean for the water situation for people living there? Yeah, so this is the flip side uh, to increasing droughts is unfortunately also increasing floods. It's because as the climate warms, the atmosphere holds more water vapor. Um, it's hotter, so it's drier in dry periods. But when it storms, the storms are bigger. And if you look at what we had in uh, southern Ontario, southern Quebec, and the Maritimes already this winter, and then certainly last spring, big floods there. Interesting, British Columbia last year had record high snowpacks just before it had a record drought forest fire season. So unfortunately, uh, these can go hand in hand together and we're seeing more of that. What are some of the problems that are then contributing uh, to this I issue that are outside of the weather? For example, aging infrastructure. It's <clears throat> our infrastructure was designed for the 20th or 19th century hmm. in terms of the climate we had then, the water supply we had then. We built our cities in floodplains and uh, many of our homes and businesses are in places they really should not be. And uh, as things get worse in terms of flooding, they are gonna be in greater risk over the future. So we've got a lot of redesign to do with respect to our reservoirs, our irrigation systems, our water protection systems for our cities. And then we have to think about uh, floodplain development for a future climate. You know, I was interested to read that Canada doesn't, Canadians really don't understand the true cost of water. We're just used to being able to, in most of our cities, you know, there are communities in the north where this doesn't happen, but you turn on the tap, outflows water that you can drink. But, you know, a 2009 report said we pay only 70% of the true cost of our water. What does that mean? Well, the, in general, at best, we pay part of the transportation cost of water, but we don't pay the cost of water as a natural resource. And that's part of the problem. Uh, I think, you know, we do when we buy bottled water, which is more expensive than gasoline. Mm -hmm. But water from the tap, we expect it to be close to being free and to be perfectly clean and available all the time. And that's, uh, that's just not going to work as we deal with water shortages. So we have to find ways to, uh, um, to value this uh, natural resource but it's also the basis of our life. And so you really can't charge for it like a normal economic commodity. It needs management. And that means managing on the river basin basis, uh, upstream and downstream across provincial and national boundaries in a way that we can get through these uh, types of variability that we expect to increase. John, the closest examples we have are places like California where we see them limiting the amount of water that people are allowed to use. So, you know, no washing your car, no watering your lawn. Could we expect to see that here in Canada? This is what will happen if we don't manage our water intelligently in the first place. And so California has been at a uh, loggerheads with itself, really, uh, for decades, and they uh, managed to get into that situation. I think we can do better in Canada, and I think we can manage our way out of this. We have better natural resources to start with, a lower population, but we also have the examples of places that didn't manage their water properly. So uh, uh, this is a wake-up call for us now to, uh, to act at this point before we're in that uh, situation.
interesting information and good to dive into with you. Thanks, John. Thank you so much.